welcome to Faber Book Time. My name is Swapna Haddo um, and I write the Dave Pigeon series. Um, when I was little, I wanted to be a detective. Um, I'm not a detective, uh, however, detectives share very similar skills to authors in that they're pretty nosy um, and pretty curious about the world. So um, that's probably why I became an author. Um, so a little bit about me. I really love it when people make me breakfast in bed um, and I really love dogs. This is my dog here, Archie. Um, and he's also my writing companion. So every book I write, he's always there. He's always listening to my drafts um, and he often um, gives me no advice at all but takes full credit for being a co-writer. Okay, Archie, down, good boy, down, good boy. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the Dave Pigeon series. Um, so there are four books in the series at the moment. We've got Dave Pigeon, How to Deal with Bad Cats and Keep Most of Your Feathers. That was the very first one that came out in 2016. Um, we have Dave Pigeon Nuggets, which uh, is the second book in the series. Um, and is one of my favourites because it's all about spies. Uh, we also have Dave Pigeon Racer, um, also one of my favourites, um, because it's all about Dave Pigeon and what happens when he gets challenged in a race against a parrot. And the most recent one, which came out last year, uh, we have Dave Pigeon Royal Coup, and it's got this amazing, beautiful, gold, shimmery cover. Um, all the books are illustrated by the very brilliant Sheena Dempsey um, and I honestly don't know anyone in the world who can draw a better pigeon than Sheena Dempsey. Hey everybody, I'm Sheena Dempsey. I'm the illustrator of the Dave Pigeon books, which are brilliantly written by the very clever, legendary, pigeonry Swapna Haddo. Um, I know that lockdown is very boring for a lot of you, so I'm going to show you step by step how to draw the main character of the Dave Pigeon books, Dave. Uh, so come over here. So get yourself a blank sheet of paper and a marker or a pencil or whatever you prefer. Uh, we'll start with Dave's head, which is just an upside down U, like this. Now Dave's favourite food is biscuits, croissants, breadsticks. So he's got a little bit of a belly on him, so we'll give him a flat belly like that. Uh, give him some tail feathers at the back. Um, Dave's kind of defining characteristic is his sling that he wears. So uh, it's made out of toilet paper, so we will draw the knot at the top like that. Um, bring the shape around like this and then draw the broken wing inside. And bring it around here. You can draw the little toilet paper dashes like this. Uh, let's do his beak, which is just like that. Um, little two big eyes, circles for eyes. I'll give him a little side eye. Uh, he's got kind of cheeky black eyebrows. Um, for feathers, you can just give him lots of little dashes like this. When you're doing yours, you can add colour as well. Um, for his legs, we will just give him two kind of matchsticks, like this. And then add the feet at the bottom. And little black claws, like this. Uh, you can draw some feathers on the ground. He's got a little bit of a messy pigeon. And you can give him a little shadow. And uh, maybe some crumbs as well. He's always eating. And there you have Dave Pigeon. I hope you enjoy drawing your very own day's pigeon at home. Um, stay safe. Bye. Okay, so 
I thought what I'd do is read you a little bit from book one of the series, Dave Pigeon, how to deal with bad cats and keep most of your feathers. So um, sit back and enjoy, here we go. The beginning of this story. Dave and me were on a routine croissant heist. It was something we'd done a hundred times before. In fact, the first time I met Dave was on a croissant heist. Back then, Dave told me he had just won a Medal of the Brave, which he wore all the time. Though, I heard a rumour later, it was just a bottle top that got stuck to him with a piece of chewing gum when he got caught in a bin bag once. Dave was swooping in from the opposite side of the pond when we both spotted a half-eaten croissant abandoned under a bench. We dived down, crashing towards the same gap between two planks of benchwood and landed at the exact same time. There we were, dangling upside down, stuck in the bench, when a huge goose grabbed our croissant and waddled off with it. A goose for bird's sake. We caught up to the goose just fine, but let me tell you something about geese. They are far bigger up close than when you see them in the distance. And they are very pecky. We were grateful to leave that fight with all our feathers. Dave and I have been friends ever since. Have you got to that bit where I almost lost my life? Can you stop interrupting me, Dave? I was just about to start that bit. But you keep ruining the story by giving things away. Where was I? Ah, yes, the day we met Mean Cat, our 100th croissant heist. It was a bright sunny morning and me and Dave were starving. Peck your own feathers off starving. All we'd had for breakfast were the wet breadcrumbs a little human had already chewed and spat out and a tiny piece of an iced bun we'd managed to steal from a duck. That's when we spotted the human lady. We couldn't believe our luck. Everyone knows that human ladies like to carry around crusts with them. Dave said that's what their handbags were for. Dave and I pattered over, trying to look friendly and hungry. As predicted, the human lady popped the clasp on her picnic basket and there was more than just bread. Inside, we spied a feast of croissants, sandwiches and biscuits. And they were the biscuits with a jam in the middle, my favourites. Follow me, I said, shuffling, shuffling closer. The human lady spotted us. Good morning. We didn't say anything back because we couldn't speak human. Would you like some croissant? Of course we would. We read, she read our minds. I'm so sorry. Archie's decided to dig a hole in the carpet. She read our minds, Archie. She read our minds and tore off a piece of golden brown flaky pastry, throwing it towards us. The sweet crumbs tumbled to our feet and we gobbled up as much as we could, filling our aching bellies. We inched closer to the basket, hoping to pinch a pastry or two for supper later. You two must be hungry, the human lady said, throwing us broken bits of bread. Dave cooed and hopped even closer to the basket. Come on, he said, nodding at me. I caught a whiff of something awful. What's that? What? That smell. Sorry, said Dave, fanning his bottom. I think it's that biryani I had it from the bin last night. Not that smell. The stink got stronger and stronger, burning my nostrils and stinging my eyes. Stop, the human lady shouted, stop. A flash of ginger and white shot out from behind the basket. Sharp needles scratched my feathers. The fiery stench of grass and wee meant only one thing cat. Claws stung my back. I ran fast, took off and flapped for my life. Down below I could see shiny strands of spit stretched across sharp fangs as the orange ball of fur leapt after me, hungry for a bite. Stop! The human lady grabbed her pet. Don't be such a mean cat. She shoved the yowling beast down inside her basket. Her eyes wide with shock. The human lady crawled across the grass and bent over the crumbs she'd thrown to us. I flew closer. There was Dave. My best friend was hurt. He was hurt bad. Full of croissant, he'd been too heavy to escape. 
His left wing drooped, all twisted and ripped. The human lady gently lifted the limp feathers with her finger. Don't worry, pigeon. I'll fix you up, she said. The cat hissed from inside her wicker cage. You mean cat, the human lady called back. That wasn't very nice at all. She stroked my friend's broken feathers. I'll look after you. The human lady rummaged through her bag and pulled out a pile of napkins. She carefully wrapped my friend in sheets of tissue. When she had finished, Dave looked like a roll of toilet paper with a beak poking out at one end and two feet at the other. I didn't tell him, but I was pretty sure I heard Mean Cat laugh. We need to get out of here, I whispered to Dave. No, he said back. We can't stay here. Mean Cat will have us for lunch. My friend turns towards me, wincing in pain. His beady eyes narrowed and his nostrils flared. That cat will regret the day she broke my wing. What are you going to do? Take her cat food? Yuck, Dave said, screwing up his beak. What would I do with her disgusting cat food? He shook off the repulsive thought. No, we're going to teach that cat. She can't mess with pigeons. And that's the end of chapter one from Dave Pigeon, How to Deal with Bad Cats and Keep Most of Your Feathers. Now, you can get your hands on this book to find out what happens next from all good bookshops and libraries. Um, and the series follows Dave. Um, we, have our, we have our Dave over here. Uh, the series follows Dave and best friend Skipper as they try to work out the world of humans, um, but from a pigeon's point of view. And they document their stories on their typewriter um, and we find out all about their adventures. Um, and we've got four books in the series, so loads of Dave Pigeon adventures for you to read. Um, okay, so one of my favourite things is that um, Dave Pigeon fans never fail when it comes to um, sending in their artwork um, and their letters. So I have all these amazing letters that I get from fans all over the world um, and it's so amazing because I love reading letters and I always reply to absolutely every single one of them. So please do keep sending them in. But I thought I would read some of your reader questions. Um, and I uh, thought I'd pick out a few and uh, read them to you. So here we go, we've got a letter from Caden, age seven, who um, asks, why are pigeons the main characters in your book? Um, so, at the moment, I live in New Zealand, but I used to live in London. In fact, I was born in London and I lived there for 36 years of my life. Yes, I think got a nod from my husband. Um, so I've lived there for quite a while um, and as you know anyone that's been to London, lives in London or has ever seen London in a movie or in the books, pigeons are plenty. Um, so it's very hard not to be inspired as a writer by what's around you and I happen to be surrounded by pigeons living in London. Um, so that's pretty much why I chose them as a character. Um, but as I was researching pigeons because yes I did lots of research for these books. Um, I found out lots of things about pigeons, which is that they, uh, which included, sorry, that they are very smart. Um, they're very brave. Lots of pigeons were crucial um, in world wars, um, in delivering messages and flying across war-torn um, countries. Um, they can be taught to read the alphabet, which is amazing, an amazing fact. Um, but you can't deny they they do come across as slightly daft. And um, so it made the perfect combination for a character. We've got a smart but slightly daft character. It makes them um, really fun to write. So thank you, Caden, for your letter. Um, we've got another one in here. This one with amazing artwork, by the way, um, from Max. Uh, will there be another Dave Pigeon book? Well, okay, so we have four in the series at the moment. Um, as I showed you. Um, at, the, at this very point in time, Sheena Dempsey, who is the illustrator, and I um, are working on a brand new series called Bad Panda, which should hopefully be coming out next year, which would be 2021. Um, and it's a brilliant series. I've had so much fun writing it, but it doesn't mean we're not returning to the pigeons. So the pigeons, um, for those of you who, re who have read uh, Royal Coup, they'll know that Dave and Skipper go on a little holiday at the end. So they're still on their holiday while Sheena and I work on something new. 
um, but hopefully we'll be returning to the pigeons because I don't think those stories are quite over yet. Okay, great question, Max. Uh, here we go, some more great artwork. We have Harrison. Harrison would like to know, what's the funniest bit that you have written in your book? Okay, so one of my favorite bits, which took a very long time to write, is in Dave Pigeon Nuggets. Um, and right at the end, Dave, um, so they have a few false starts in the book. They got the pages in the wrong order, um, but they finally get them in the, the right order. Right at the end, they have a chapter called The End of the Book. And I think I'm going to read you a bit of that. So here we go, chapter 14, the last chapter in Dave Pigeon Nuggets. The end of the book. This really is the end of the book. There's no story left. The end. I'm not kidding. It's the actual end. The endy, 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 end, endy, 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 end. The end. End, 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 my wing got stuck on the B key. So there we go, Skipper. Um, managed to convince the publishers that these were crucial pages in the book. And I will forever be so proud of that. That's my favorite chapter. Okay, thank you for that, Harrison. We've got, uh, let's get two more questions, shall we? We've got um, some more brilliant artwork um, from Phoebe. What inspired you to write books? Um, so I really love reading, um, I really love storytelling, hello Archie, I really love um, finding out um, new things, meeting new friends, new adventures um, and I think naturally if you are a reader who loves reading you will kind of love to write your own stories. Um, so um, that's kind of how it happened, as soon as I was able to kind of put crayon to paper. I did start writing stories and drawing stories. That's my very noisy dog there, if you can hear him. Um, and that's kind of how I fell into it. I, um, I was a reader first, and then very shortly after became a writer, and I haven't stopped writing since, really. Um, but great question, Phoebe, thank you. Um, here we go. We've got, let's go for the last question from, oh, this is a great name, Milo Harry Jacobs Bickerton. Excellent. If I don't use that as a character in my books, I'd be a fool. Okay, here's a question. At the end of Day Pigeon Racer, when they get back to the human lady's house, there are two cat flaps. But in the fourth book, we never found out why there was two cat flaps. Please, could you write us back? Okay, right. So, um, Milo with the great name. Um, yes, you're right. So at the end of Day Pigeon Racer, we find out that there are two cat flaps, an extra cat flap has been added to the human lady's house. Um, and in Dave Pigeon Royal Coup, I haven't really addressed that. Um, but that is because in the pipeline, I do have a story that I'd really like to write, which involves two cat flaps. So I'm hoping I'm setting up for that story. Um, and hopefully um, one day you'll get to find out a little bit about those two cat flaps. So don't forget about them. They will come round at some point. Thank you so much for listening. Um, now it's over to you guys. Uh, what are you reading today? Bye.